ever wondered what it takes to be able to climb up mountains like a Tour de France contender, to be able to ride up Alpe d'Huez alongside the likes of Chris Froome or Nairo Quintana? Well, I can tell you, it's not easy, but I am about to show you. Actually, who am I kidding? I've never been that fast, and I never will be. But I can probably tell you what's required in a cafe, over a coffee, with a lovely huge slab of cake. Climbing is all about your power to weight ratio. So if you want to get better at climbing, you'll either need to increase your sustainable power or lose weight from your body or lose weight from your bike. Now, since most pro riders are now riding around on bikes that are at the minimum UCI weight limit of 6.8 kilograms, that will generally mean they focus on the first two. Increasing your power is the holy grail for all professional cyclists. Now, if you're a sprinter, that focus may well be on shorter term power between five seconds and 30 seconds. If you're a cobbled classic specialist, it'll be slightly longer, maybe between one and five minute power, the kind of duration of a critical sector of Paris-Roubaix. However, if you want to win the Tour de France, you're gonna to need to focus on your longer term power, maybe between 10 minutes and one hour, the kind of duration for medium to longer climbs and also for time trials as well. The more power they have at their disposal for the same weight, the faster they'll be able to climb when needed and the fresher they will arrive at the climbs in the first place. The other focus then is in losing weight. Now this is something which is very important to do but also potentially quite dangerous. Tour de France riders, if they want to win the overall, will have a body fat percentage of around about five, sometimes even less than that. And that's not something that they can sustain for the entire year. So the trick is to arrive at the Tour de France as fit as you've ever been, but also as lean. Now trying to get that lean is very tricky indeed. Restricting your calories too much will mean that you don't have the feel that you need to go out training. Not restricting them enough will mean that you either don't lose weight or worse still, you actually put some on. Now this obsession with getting really lean is very plain to see. In fact, if any general member of the public saw a Tour de France winner walking down the beach, they probably wouldn't even think they could ride a bike, let alone win the biggest race of the year. So how does a Tour de France contender know that they are both fit enough and also lean enough to win the Tour de France? Well, six watts per kilogram as a sustainable power has often been thought of as the minimum that you need if you want to try and win. And in reality these days, that figure is probably slightly higher. So take a 68 kilogram rider, they need to be able to sustain 410 watts for around about an hour to have a chance of winning. And for an 80 kilogram rider, more of a real world weight, that watts shoots up to 480. Now that's a lot of power right there. Hence the reason why not many 80 kilogram riders win the Tour de France. But there's actually more to it than that six watts per kilo figure. Because not only do they have to sustain six watts per kilogram, they might have to do it at the end of a five hour stage, having previously done it earlier on in the stage. And they're probably also going to have to do it on back to back days as well. So to win the Tour de France, not only do you need an enormous power to weight ratio, but you also need superhuman powers of recovery and endurance. So those are the physical attributes that you need to win the Tour de France, but there's still even more to it than that. You also need to be able to position yourself well within the peloton. Now, if you start a mountain, for example, at the back of the peloton, you're going to be putting yourself at an immediate disadvantage of somewhere between 15 and 20 seconds versus those that start at the front. If you're super talented, you might be able to get away with that once or twice, but do it for every single climb and mountain of the Tour de France, and all that extra energy that you have to expend will soon add up, and you'll pay for it one day and lose a huge chunk of time. Now, that ability to position yourself at the front can come down to the rider's own personal skill level, but it can also come down to our next point, a strong team. Now, a strong team is invaluable in getting you into position before the start of a climb, having used as little energy as possible. But even once the climb starts, they can do a great job of pacing you up and sheltering you from the wind. Now, sheltering from the wind might seem a strange thing to talk about on a climb where you're at much lower speed. And it's true, the difference will be much less than sheltering behind people on the flat. However, at the speed that the Tour de France contenders are going, it is still very much a consideration. Now, Team Sky have been a great example of this over the last few years with Chris Froome. They have been able to pace him towards the top of the final climb of one of the first mountain stages, where he has then been able to unleash a devastating attack. 
Well, I'm back on my bike because this last point is one where you and I can mimic a Tour de France winner, and that is pacing. Because they, just like us, will pay for it if they go too far into the red for a prolonged period of time at the foot of a mountain. So a Tour de France winner will only attack when he knows he can sustain it. And that's it. All you need to do to climb with the best at the Tour de France is increase your power and lower your weight until you get to that magic six watts per kilogram figure. Improve your skills within the bunch. Make sure that you're blessed with genetics which allow for quick recovery and amazing endurance. And then surround yourself with a super team of climbers. And then after you've done all of that, don't forget that like everybody else in the world, you still need to pace yourself on the climbs. Now we would love to hear how you get on with these tips and you can leave your comments in the section just down below this video. And who knows, there might be one talented youngster out there who, despite watching this video, goes on to win the Tour de France in 10 years time. Now you might want to watch the following couple of videos to help you as you embark on your Tour de France route. Just up there is our video which shows you how to increase your functional threshold power. And just down there is a science video that Matt and Cy did showing you what happens when you put on weight and go up a climb. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, it's absolutely free. All you've got to do is click on the GCN globe.